I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. And this is Alter Ego Comics TV, episode number 88. We are from the store Alter Ego Comics in Lima, Ohio. We, we work there. We live there. <laughs> we love comics. And that's why we record these episodes every week where we talk about some of the things that we think are great in comics and hopefully that you'll check out as well. Uh, not a whole lot of comic news this week, so we're going to skip that and go to our expanded list of last week's top picks. And we'll start things off with Detective Comics number zero. And I just noticed that I didn't write any of the creators down <laughs> on our script, so we may not mention any creators by name, we're just going to talk about the issues. <laughs> uh, but this is the beginning of DC's zero month, where they're publishing all zero issues, for all of their 52 titles, and they are origin stories, prequel stories, things that took place before the beginning of the new 52. So in the case of Detective Comics number zero, I do remember this is written by Greg Hurwitz with artwork by Tony Daniel. And uh, Hurwitz has been writing Batman the Dark Knight and did has done a really great job with the Scarecrow storyline that's going on over there. And he brings a, a different perspective, I guess, to Batman, uh, one that is very cool. So this is a story of uh, Bruce Wayne, and he's finishing up his world travels before he becomes Batman, and uh, stops over in, is he in Nepal? I don't know, he's somewhere. He's in, in the mountains, there's a monastery kind of thing. Himalayas, somewhere, yeah. I don't know. I don't think he's actually in Nepal, but yeah, somewhere in that part. Somewhere of like Nepal. <laughs> I don't know what that uh, he's is. He's at that but... bar from Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> oh. He's in the Golden Child. <laughs> But anyway, so he wants to study with this this master who will teach him to do great things. And it was just, I, I can't really say much more than that without giving away because I, I didn't see the ending of this book coming. Um, which every time that happens, I'm surprised. When you're reading, when you've read comics for as long as I have, you're not surprised very often. Uh, and maybe I was just tired when I was reading it, but I didn't see the ending coming and I thought that was very cool. So we get to see the new 52 version of uh, Bruce Wayne pre-Batman uh, studying, honing his skills, and uh, you get to kind of see why he is the way he is as Batman. So I really enjoyed it. It was great. Yeah, super awesome. And also super awesome last week was Think Tank number two. Uh, this is the second issue from Image about uh, <laughs> the super smart genius guys that the government keeps locked in their labs so they can work up uh, terrible devices to destroy people. Uh, the first issue did a great job of uh, kind of humanizing the characters, making us want to follow these people's adventures. The second issue actually did uh, a wonderful job of kind of setting up what life is like in this think tank, the kind of things they develop, what goes on with their ideas, where uh, when things are getting deployed in the field. And it's just, it's so much fun to see these, you know, these wickedly intelligent people kind of manipulating events around them, see how they react to the effect that their inventions re rot, rot? <laughs> reek on the world. And uh, Think Tank was super cool. That's, I mean, I, without giving away a plot, I don't know what else I can yeah. tell you, but it was, it was a lot of fun. It's like uh, if you weaponized Sheldon Cooper. Yes. And if Sheldon Cooper was a little bit cooler than he actually Yeah, was. all right. <laughs> That's probably fair. <laughs> Next up on my list, uh, Green Lantern number zero. This is written by Jeff Johns with artwork by Doug Monkey. And this is uh, the introduction of the first Arab American Green Lantern. Uh, his name is Boz, and I can't remember his last name. Uh, but this is this guy's going to play an important part in the, the Rise of the Third Army, the big Green Lantern storyline that has kicked off. And it's great to see a new Green Lantern. It's great to see the backstory of this character that we know nothing about. It's great that it takes place in an area that I hung around in when I was young, in Dearborn, Michigan. Um, so what's not to love? You know, In the la last week's episode, I was talking about Green Lantern Annual number one. Uh, this week, Green Lantern number zero is on my list. And keep in mind, this is after being away from Green Lantern for a long time. I, I haven't read Green Lantern in many months, and I was able to jump back in. And I've thoroughly enjoyed these last two issues. Yeah, and that's well. That's the first new lantern from Earth in twenty years, almost since At Kyle. Least. Oh, yeah. Kyle, yeah, Kyle was in the nineties. Yeah. yeah, twenty years, give or take. I forget <laughs> about Kyle all the time. <laughs> oh, that's right. There was another one there. Uh, also, great last week. Continuing Image's run of awesomeness uh, was Harvest Number Two. This is uh, a look inside the life of organ smugglers, of people who. Uh, decide to go outside the bounds of legality and cut up others and stick their organs into people who have the money to pay for it. And it's... That sounds dirty. It, it is what, <laughs> I mean, basically, it, it is like that. It is dirty. <laughs> it's a dirty business, organ sticking. Yeah, and it's, it's the, it, this grabbed me the same way the first issue grabbed me. It's just great to see these... It's like watching The Godfather. There are no good people in The Godfather. They're all basically scumbags, but you still kind of want some of them to succeed. You, you, you're interested in the way they change when they do these horrible things. 
This issue is the same thing. You know, there aren't a lot of truly good people in this book, but the way they react to the different levels of disturbing behavior, the weird stuff they're forced to do is is truly great. It's, it's great human moments, and it's very compelling. Uh, there's things that happen at the end of this book that almost made me cheer a little bit. You know, it really has you rooting for these semi-despicable people, and that's awesome. Continuing with awesome, let's use awesome in every awesome review that we give this week. <laughs> Hawkeye number two by Matt Fraction and David Aja or Aha. Until oh. I hear from him, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'll keep saying it one way or the other. Uh, Hawkeye number one was overwhelmingly our pick of the pick of the week the <laughs> last month when it came out, and this issue also makes the list. It's just so it, it's so different from anything else at Marvel right now. Uh, I said in, when we were talking about Hawkeye number one, it does have an Image Comics feel or a Vertigo feel. It feels like an indie book, uh, and there's not a whole lot of superhero action going on. It's Clint Barton the guy, not Clint Barton Hawkeye. And uh, in this issue, he's teamed up with Kate Bishop, the female young Avenger who takes the name Hawkeye when Hawkeye was actually Ronin, and I've already lost some of you, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Fraction is doing a great job with this, and, and AHA's artwork is just... It's incredible. Uh, it, it's universally praised at this point, uh, and not just at this point, but prior to doing Hawkeye. I know that you know his work was very highly regarded. So you cannot go wrong with this series unless you don't have a soul or a heart. <laughs> it's just really, really good. I, and, and again, without telling you what's going on, and each issue it, it, right now is a done in one. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first issue was a standalone. The second issue is a standalone, and it was great. Yeah, and they're standalone. They are building pieces of a bigger right, universe. Right. Um, but one of the things I really like is the the kind of humor, the winking at the universe. I mean, one of the things that Fraction excels at is telling you everything you need to know in a single issue and not making it feel like you're being told. You know, Hawkeye kind of acknowledges who Kate is, basically gives you the, the quick rundown. And even in that, he kind of winks at being Ronan. You know, he kind of recognizes that the life he leads is occasionally ridiculous. And it's just very humanizing to see Clint like that. Loved it. Loved it. Hawkeye's awesome. <laughs> and going from Hawkeye, we also have Archer and Armstrong, number two. Uh, this is from Valiant, and it's really good. <laughs> it's not awesome, because I can't say awesome anymore. I've offended Mark. But uh, Archer and Armstrong. Stupendous. Is stupendous. It is super. It is... Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. Archer and Armstrong is was really cool. This continues the storyline where we have a uh, kid raised by fundamentalist whack jobs to be a super soldier for God, who teams up with a guy who basically is a borderline God, a guy who's lived for a very long time, is massively powerful, and is uh, just great. You know, he's a <laughs> drunken oaf who's lived forever, and he has this great kind of perspective on reality. And uh, I really like the way that they've uh, treated Archer, the young kid. They sort of have him acting from, acting from the things he was taught, but also sort of realizing and recognizing that everything he's taught isn't necessarily the way the world is, or maybe even the way the world should be. Uh, and it also has some great, just kind of nonsensical adventure. They're kind of almost at this point on like a Da Vinci Code adventure to track down pieces of this ancient device to prevent world destruction or to prevent them from falling into the hands of the bad guys. And I mean, there's nuns with machine guns and... Eye patches. Eye patch. One-eyed nuns with machine guns. Yes. That's, that should just be the cover. <laughs> that should be all we need to say. And that is all we say. <laughs> Archer and Armstrong's cool. Uh, a couple things uh, in the collected edition department we want to bring to everyone's attention. Manhattan Projects Volume 1 came out, and uh, th buy it. <laughs> I mean, really. It's... Manhattan Projects is for fans of science fiction, for, fa for fans of history, for fans of just good comics. Uh, we've raved about every issue that's come out, and this collected edition collects all the issues that are out right now, one through five. Uh, and it's written by uh, that guy, Jonathan Hickman, John. <laughs> with art by Nick Batara. And Hickman is obviously a sci-fi junkie. I mean, he, I mean, with his Fantastic Four run and his FF run, there's a lot of science fiction in there. His creator-owned work at Image prior to Manhattan Projects was very sci-fi related. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this isn't hardcore science fiction because that stuff makes my head hurt. Uh, it's very, it's very readable. It's very relatable because they're using historical people, and it's taking place during a time when we all know what was going on in the world in the late '30s, early '40s. So, just if you haven't checked out the single issues, and if you haven't, what is wrong with you? <laughs> um, now is a great time to pick up the collected edition. And, and those of you that have read it, uh, I would say even pick one up, read it again, and then give it to somebody that either isn't into comics or could be into comics. Just 
give them this and they will probably fall in love with it and want to read more independent stuff. Yeah. The big stumbling block to a lot of hard science fiction is the science fiction. You know, that the, they feel the need to have Star Trek stuff where they explain a bunch of things with words that don't mean a lot. And that's one of my favorite things about Manhattan Project. They introduce these crazy, insane concepts and then they just assume that we get it. You know, it's like there's no need to explain how it works. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that it works. It's, it's just wonderful. Flowing awesome. Also awesome. Also from Image, Thief of Thieves Volume 1. Awesome. Awesome is our word this week. <laughs> Ready to assist you. Pee wee. Morning, Cocky. What's the name? <laughs> Secret word. The word of the day is awesome. awesome. <laughs> You all no, no, no. know what to do for the rest of the day. When, when anyone says the secret word, scream real loud. Okay? Okay? Uh, Thief of Thieves is a series created by Robert Kirkman. Uh, the first story arc, which is collected in this trade, is written by Nick, Nick Spencer. Spencer. I was going to say James Asmus, but he wrote the new he's issues that the just started. <laughs> and uh, it is the story of Redmond, who is the world's greatest thief. He's uh, so good he can steal from other thieves. The only thing he can't steal back is his life. Uh, you, you get a little bit of everything with this. You know, the first couple issues are almost like a how-to in felony. You know, it's very, um, what's the word I want? Like a heist movie. You know, you see them pulling off crimes, setting up things, how he collects his crew together. And that's awesome. And then you also see this deeper relationship with Redmond and his family. And you see what he's had to give up to lead this life of crime. And see that maybe he doesn't necessarily think that was the best choice for him. And what he's willing to do to get back his family. Uh, seven issues, fourteen ninety nine. Yes. It's a steal. Uh, <laughs> steal Robert Kirkman, book. Nick Spencer. Great book. Fifteen bucks. You cannot go wrong with this one. In development at AMC to be a television show. This is the guy that created The Walking Dead. Oh yeah, that guy. Don't get on. Don't don't miss the boat on this one. Pick up this first volume now. Uh, and we've started to stock some magazines at the store. We haven't done this in a while. Uh, Wizard went the way of the dodo a few years ago, <laughs> and uh, we haven't really replaced it with anything. But personally, I've been buying a, a magazine called Back Issue, and that focuses on comics from the uh, the Bronze Age and the early Modern Age. So. Uh, the late 70s or the 70s, 80s, and, and early 90s. And it is just so chock full of goodness. This is one of the few magazines that I read cover to cover, cover to cover, regardless of the content that's in it. Um, there's always something, some article that I'm interested in, but I find myself becoming interested in the other articles, even though I may not have had any interest before. Uh, but it's definitely for people that have an interest in comics from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. There's a lot of character history. There's a lot of creator history. There are creators interviewing creators. There's a lot of artwork in it from people's personal collections. And if you're a fan of comics from that time period, if you'd like to learn more about certain characters, I would pick up Back Issue, and we're going to stock this going forward. Hopefully, uh, some of you will actually buy it <laughs> so that we're not just stocking it and then destroying them later. Uh, but issue number 60 just came out, and it uh, looks back on... The Long Halloween, Batman The Long Halloween, written by Jeff Loeb with art by Tim Sale. And the whole issue has a Halloween theme to it. So if you like monsters and comics, if you are a fan of The Long Halloween, and I know many, many of you are, <laughs> uh, if you want to see that dissected and find out a backstory and you know how The Long Halloween came together, this is the magazine that will give you that information. So pick up back issue number 60 next time you see it. Uh, and what I really like about Back Issue is that each issue is kind of a theme issue. You know, a few months ago they had an Avengers issue. So it, it's not like you have to pick up the book every month. I mean, every month it's high quality, but it's easy to follow, <laughs> to look at it and go, oh, I, I like this. You know, this is, it's very nice to know that basically the whole issue is going to be tied around that theme. So, you know, so if you like Batman and Halloween theme stuff, this is a great issue for you. If you like Avengers, the Avengers issue is an awesome pickup. You know, you don't have to worry about, oh, there's a cover story that's four pages long and then there's 80 pages I don't care about. You know, it's it's got more it's thematically solid, more substance than anything in comics that I can remember, <laughs> magazine wise. Magazine wise, yeah. All right, let's move on to this this week's best bets. It's a big week. Uh, we've got Avengers versus X Men number eleven, so the second to the last issue of uh, AVX, and some big stuff will happen, and then that will springboard us into Marvel now. No, 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 no. Uh, Batgirl number zero comes out this week, and this one is supposed to show us how Batgirl, how Barbara first becomes Batgirl, and, uh, it, and at least in the solicitation copy, it leads us to believe uh, that we're going to get some backstory on her shocking injury 
and her uh, recovery and her drive to walk again. So maybe some, some questions will be answered with Batgirl number zero. Speaking of Manhattan Projects, uh, Manhattan Projects number six comes out this week, so you can pick up the collected edition, read one through five, and then get right into the current stuff with issue number six. Uh, Team Seven number zero, which is one of DC's zero issues. This is the launch of the new Team Seven series, and this just looks incredible. Uh, uh, it's got threads of the entire DCU are going to run through this. Uh, it takes place prior to the launch of the new 52, but the team is Dinah Lance, who's Black Canary from Birds of Prey, uh, Amanda Waller, who's from the Suicide Squad, Steve Trevor, of course, from Justice League and Justice League Dark, uh, John Lynch. Who's John Lynch? I have no idea who John Lynch is. I don't is. know who John Lynch is, but I know these other people. Alex Fairchild from Gen 13 and Superboy. Uh, Cole Cash, who is Grifter, and everybody's favorite Slade Wilson, Deathstroke. So this is kind of the Black Ops team, Team 7. It did exist in the Wildstorm universe, but was mm -hmm. not made up, obviously, of these people, except for uh, Grifter and maybe Fairchild. I, I didn't read it back then. I doubt it, though, because she was pretty young. But it's written by Justin Jordan, who uh, wrote The Strange Talent of Luther Strode, mm -hmm. which was published by Image Comics. And that is a really cool comic. Uh, I'm very curious to see what he does with the DC Universe. Uh, and finally, the book that always makes our lists of one or <laughs> one form or another, Wolverine and the X-Men number 16 comes out this week. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see it on our top five for next week. <laughs> That should do it. Uh, we're getting lots of comments. Uh, we've gotten some great comments last week and, and the week before, and we hope those comments continue. We like the interaction. We like being able to hear what you think about what we're doing. So please leave those, and thanks you for watching. We'll see you next time.